Hi, I'm Gabriel Dean. I'm the playwright for Qualities of Starlight. Um, Qualities of Starlight is a script uh, that I started writing last year um, after hearing a comedy routine of uh, Stephen Wright, a great comedian. Um, and he told this joke. I can't even remember the joke now, but it was it was about uh, how stars die and we're not actually seeing the, the starlight that they're emitting anymore. Um, and I'd heard of that before, but for some reason, the way that Stephen Wright said it made me think I need to write a play with this. Oh, yeah, as the central play idea. is about um, the interconnection of religion and science. Um, thematically, the play is about that. Uh, you have a, a son who comes from. Uh, a Southern Appalachian, Southern Baptist kind of background, um, who goes off, goes away from his family for years, and becomes a, an astronomer and a prolific astronomer at that. And astronomy, I mean, it's it's deliberate the choice of astronomy uh, versus you know bi biologists or something like that, because in physics and in astronomy, um, and even to some degree in chemistry, there is this sort of sacredness and, and religiosity, um, poetic feeling about the way that the scientists think and the way that they, they, um, they talk about what they study. I, I'm, I'm really interested in that, in the overlap of religion and science. I think it's a really modern thing. We're the first in our uh, existence as human beings. The characters really in the that. play are um, actually based on people that I have known growing up. Um, I don't necessarily know any meth addicts, um, but they're definitely the personalities of the people. I've definitely known people with addiction who've struggled with addiction, um, and how addiction morphs a relationship, a very close relationship, how it can change it um, to where it's still recognizable, but it's it's really the person that is the, the outsider of the addiction that I think that's most affected by it. Um, so... That's where uh, Rose and Junior came from, and then Theo being the outsider to the addiction, and Polly, uh, his wife, uh, being even more removed from it, having trouble just understanding um, why it is. Uh, a lot of people, I think the outsiders think that, that addiction is a choice, and ultimately it is, but not when you're, not when you're the addict. I personally, um, in every player, right, there's always a character that I identify with much more strongly than, uh, than others and it's always the person who's closest to my age and uh, usually male um, and in the script that's Theo the son uh, the sort of prodigal son who who leaves and then comes back um, I certainly know that narrative in my own life um, having grown up in the Appalachian South can't really tell anymore theater has completely taken the accent out of my mouth but um, I, I certainly identify with his journey through the script of, of uh, and then to talk about it in sort of astronomical terms of uh, you know the center if you're if you're the satellite around the planet um, and you spin out of orbit for a while and then coming back to the planet which has changed either the, the planet home or you the satellite um, and in this case you know I think it's both uh, both have changed but I don't think that Theo he certainly doesn't recognize that um, at first and it takes these huge events um, that occur um, discovering that his mother is addicted to crystal meth and his father to make him understand that uh, home's not the same place anymore. Well, I did start out as an actor uh, in Atlanta. I went to Oglethorpe University, uh, graduated there in 2003, that sounds right, 2003, um, and I studied fiction and poetry. Um, as, as my major, as a creative writing major at Oglethorpe. Did lots of theater when I was there, um, but it wasn't my primary focus. Um, and then in my senior year, uh, my advisor said to me, and it's really a simple statement, but you're an actor and you're a writer. Why aren't you writing plays? Um, and I said, oh yeah, well, of course, I should write plays. I still very much am an actor. I considered myself an actor and, and, uh, and very involved. Uh, or I try to be as involved as I can be in it. And, and I feel like the two really inform each other because I, this semester at UT, um, I wasn't involved in any way as an actor and I felt like I was missing something. something in my being life. an actor definitely uh, gives me insight as a playwright. Um, and it's just a love of language. Um, as an actor, I don't, I don't know any actor, um, whether you're first starting out or way into your career that isn't absolutely in love with language um, and doesn't really 
just enjoy saying the words. Um, so as a writer, when I'm when I'm sitting down and writing, I actually do stand up a lot and act out what I'm saying and let it be in my body and in my mouth. And you learn a lot. I consider um, myself, I think, uh, both a poet and a playwright. Um, and I attempt to. I don't want to say that I'm a language playwright, but I definitely dwell on language and the imagery that the the you know the word choices can evoke. Um, the I guess the one of the things that you're going to get when you come see a play that I've written um, certainly is is a lot of spectacle, um, and I don't mean in like the Cirque du Soleil kind of spectacle way. Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of silence in the script as well, um, and I do that mostly through stage directions. But a lot of times, um, I'm a big believer in the word beat, and whatever that translates into, you know, for a director, for an actor, for me, I use that word because it means heartbeat. It means one beat of the heart. Um, and if you know, if I put beat, 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 that's three heartbeats. Um, pause is something different. Um, it depends on the script, but in Qualities of Starlight, a pause is, is, I think, a moment when everybody can't breathe together, when it's just a stop you know um stage directions i tend to write really florid stage directions very visual very kind of novel-esque kind of stage directions where i'm really trying to paint a picture um i know a lot of directors look at that and slash it all out and say no that's not what i'm not i'm not going to do that but even if they do um you know slash those kind of stage directions out the fact that they read them they're informed they're informed about the kind of world that i'm trying to create um and ultimately, you know, theater is a collaborative art. I, I, I certainly appreciate that about it. Like with, with poetry, you know, if I write a poem and I give it to a reader, it's a, it's an extremely intimate relationship. They never, they, they only have the, the, the image that's occurring in their mind. And with theater, I give a director a script, a director interprets it and passes his or her interpretation on to an actor who then interprets it, who passes it to the audience who then interprets it. And by the time that it arrives there, I know it's something completely different than what maybe I saw in my mind, but that's definitely homework after you see um, Qualities of Starlight. It is a play that chases a, an extremely ephemeral metaphor. Um, we're dealing with the basics. We're back to Plato here of light and dark, of how we see um, the world in which we're living. Um, and on top of all that, you have drug addiction and adoption and all kinds of real, very tangible familial issues. Um, but I, I do think, you know, I, I'm not a writer who is interested in answering questions. I'm interested in raising questions. Um, so if there is a parting gift at the end of Qualities of Starlight, I, I hope it's that you leave with a lot of satisfying questions. You no, know, not unsatisfying questions that, um, uh, I guess that's it. Yeah. You're satisfied with, with the questions that, that you have, and, and it's a play that sticks with you over the long haul. I mean, the, the, the most um, exciting plays that I've, I've seen, I can still, you know, I can still talk about them and discuss them. And, I think and that comedy and our tragedy are um, not as different as people would like to believe that they are. Um, you know, when the Greeks were writing, a tragedy was... Oedipus, a comedy with something by Aristophanes. Two very different things. And in, in the modern world, you know, after World War II, all the events that have occurred in the 20th century, the lines are kind of blurred now, I think. Um, and I, I, I find it difficult to sit in a theater and just be railed over the head with <laughs> tragedy, 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 tragedy. Um, I know that uh, I saw a film at the Austin Film Festival recently, uh, Precious, um, and it's uh, it's based on the Push by Sapphire, and it's it is so heavy, so so heavy. And there were one or two moments in the film where it was just such a relief to laugh, you know. And the lines weren't even that funny, but you, you had you had this ability to let go. I think as a writer, if you don't give for modern audiences anyway, maybe it worked in Greek times. Um, for modern audiences, if you don't give them that space to breathe, then you're not you're not doing something. So I hope you will come see Qualities of Starlight at the Essential Theater. Um, I'm very proud of the work, and I'm very proud of the work that the Essential does, and I hope you will enjoy it.